Hey, I'm Donald Bell with Maker Project Lab, and today I thought we'd check out this. This is Pocket Chip. It is a little handheld Linux computer, it sells for $69. It's from a company called Next Thing Co. out of Oakland. And uh, yeah, I've been curious about this. This is not a sponsored video. I just have a friend, David Sheltema, who I worked with at Make Magazine, who now works over at Next Thing Co. I told him I was curious to check this out, so he sent one over. Um, my sense is that it's kind of like a, like the hipster teenage son of a Raspberry Pi melded up with a Game Boy. Um, but I don't know. Let's check it out together, all right? I'm gonna take it over to the table and we'll unbox it and take a look. Here is the pocket chip in its box. Cardboard box. On the back of the box, you get a little instructions. You get a URL to go to for more information, but otherwise it seems pretty straightforward. Let's pull it out. And I already broke the seal on this earlier. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, this isn't, this isn't a straight up unboxing, but here you go. This is, this is the pocket chip. This is what you get in the box. Notice there's no charger, there's no headphones, there's no extra accessories. It's, you get the chip, the pocket chip. Um, if you, you need a micro USB cable to recharge this thing, but I'm sure you can find one. Now that's the chip itself, that little rectangle on the back, and you can pull that off and have your your little Linux computer board you could use for other projects if you want. Here on the case, you can see there's little GPIO pins and uh, power pins for hooking this up and wiring up a bigger project to this controller if you want. And here I can just pull off the chip board itself. This is the chip, uh, pretty basic, inexpensive Linux computer chip. It's got a headphone jack, USB, micro USB, JST battery connector, labeled pins on this each side. It's a nice looking board. I think around $9 you can get this separately. You can see the labeled pins on the board itself too, on the, the pocket chip. I can just squeeze that back on. No problem. Now here's the keyboard. The keyboard for the pocket chip is very unique. There are these little raised metal buttons have a very satisfying little click to them. And there's a function key for getting to some of those different characters. The space bars, these two little rectangles. And the whole thing is covered in a, uh, like a, a plastic protective sheet. It feels like you should pull it off, but you really, you really shouldn't. And I'm booting it up. I'm speeding this up just because the, the regular boot up takes quite a while to do. Uh, but here we are. We get to the welcome screen and it'll walk you through it and remind you that the screen is actually touch screen. You can, I'm going through it using the arrow keys on the keyboard right now, but I could just as well be touching the screen. You can code in terminal, you can play games in the Pico 8 sunbox for me. It's like a tracker for making music. The power button's also the home button, battery indicator, Wi-Fi status, power, menu, shutting down, rebooting, and settings for Wi-Fi and volume and stuff. And then there's the USB port, headphone jack, and micro USB port up at the top. We already kind of saw those, but here they are. And I think that headphone jack also works as a VGA video output. I haven't tested that though. All right, you can go to docs.getchip.com for more information, but otherwise you can just dive into it. So here's the main menu. Um, I'm gonna, I'll just tap a few of these. Here's terminal, it's your basic command line, Linux command line terminal. Uh, from here you can execute whatever kind of standard Linux commands you want. Here's a little notepad for creating text documents, file browser, files around and make new ones or trash them. It's a lot prettier than jumping through files on the command line. And Pico 8, this is really the, the centerpiece of the pocket chip. This is a, a fantasy console that has user generated, user created games. And you can uh, download new ones, you can create new ones from scratch. You can edit games as you're playing them, that's really a big deal. 
and uh, when you're done editing them, you can hit run and play your edited version of the game. So if a level is too challenging, you can go in, edit the code, and uh, make it easier to play. So we're going to play Celeste here. This is their kind of flagship game. I've played it a few times before, but I'm not any good at it. And I'm going to use the arrow keys and the numbers here for jumping and boosting my way around. It's kind of tough. It's not the most hand-friendly interface. It's It kind of has the look of like a classic NES gamepad, but it's not nearly as fun to use. But it works. Now I could use the USB port on the top here to connect up a uh, traditional gamepad, USB gamepad. But just right now I'm using what uh, the built-in controls are. All right, so I'm already have I'm already struggling here on on the first level. So I'm going to go to edit this cart and that's going to kick me into the code for this game. Now the code is pretty well labeled. There's a lot here I don't know or understand, but I understand the different categories as I'm scrolling through. So as I keep going, Hopefully I'll find something worth editing. I don't want to edit the music. Across the top though, I'm not, you can't really see it in this framing, but there are different um, little things you can touch to edit the music or the sprites or the layout. Um, right now I'm in the, the code edit. Here I found something labeled gravity. This seems like a good fun one to edit. Instead of it being 0.021, I'm gonna make it 0.01 and see if that helps me. This one's under the jump menu. I change that number. The dash, which is kind of like the, the super boost, I think. Take that up a couple. And then I'm gonna hit escape. And then I'm gonna type in run. Now, when I play this game, this is now the edited version. I'm gonna see if anything's changed. Look at this, my gravity. <laughs> I can just basically float. <laughs> I can float all the way up to the top. No problem. I, I can just hit jump, and I'm just, nothing's pulling me down. I can just slowly get to where I want to go. I'm basically flying. Now this might, this might actually be too easy, um, but you get the idea. Uh, some other things just to take you through on this settings, shutdown menu, sleep, reboot, I'm gonna shut it down, and there you go. That is the pocket chip, in brief. I hope this was a useful video. I've got a full write-up on the pocket chip on my website, makerprojectlab.com, and I'll drop a link for that in the show notes. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.